All right, guys, we're back for topic number three, which is one that, of course, I love so much. It's investing. In today's topic of conversation, not only are we going to talk about investing in some statistics and really shape your mind, but this entire thing is a mindset shift to have more success in the markets and shift your perception on how to invest. So no matter whether you can invest $100 today or $100,000 or $100 million today, this is going to bring value to you because I'm going to show you real data and insights as to how I think about investing for the long term. So right now, I want to make a statement. If you're sitting on cash with no place or no plan for it, your money is dead. So first of all, take a look at this chart. I know it's a little bit blurry, but from 1900 to 2020, this is the value of $1. It is now under 10 cents. So all those people that were passed down from generation to generation to generation, and they said, save, just save your money. Congratulations. You lost over 90% of your investment, which is saving. You see, your goal in life should be taking your capital, taking your cash, and thinking about it as a tool. How can I transfer it into something that has a good chance of appreciating in value? Now, what's a good chance? I'm going to show you 99%. What if today I could prove to you that you have a 99% chance of making money? 99. That sounds like some fake clickbait title. I will show you a 99% chance way of making money. Not my opinion, data-driven and analytics. So that's what we're going to talk about today with regard to your money. So first things first, most people do not know how to stay invested. Okay. Most people will not stay invested. What I want you to focus on right now is what we've seen happen over the last several years, actually decades. This is about 1960. The average time frame somebody stayed invested in the New York Stock Exchange in 1960 was seven years. Right now, we're less than a year. The time span of us investing has gotten shorter. And what I'll show you in a little bit is the longer you're invested, the higher your probability of making money in the markets. See, when you're invested in the short term, you're dealing with a lot of this. Up and down and up and down and up and down. But if you zoom out on that, it, that up and down was just that. You were right here. That is right here. And you got stuck. And that's why now, because of social media, because of TikTok, because of Instagram, because of YouTube, everybody's looking for the fast buck. If you're looking for the fast bu buck, you might as well get off this video. If you're looking for the for sure thing, that's what I'm all about. Let's create generational wealth, $100 at a time. So with that said, moving on to the next slide here, if you stayed invested, the odds of you making money would have skyrocketed. That's the point. Most people will not stay invested. Take a look at this chart. Probably the most powerful chart I can give you today. At one year, your odds of making money are approximately 70%. If you invest money in the stock market, and this is, say, the S&P 500, if you invest money today and you hold for one year, you've got a 70% chance that that cash balance that balance will be higher than today in one year, 70%. If you go to two years, you're at approximately 77%. Fast forward up here to nine years, you're at 95%. Fast forward 12 years, that magic number, you're 98, 99%. What if I told you, you have a 99% chance of making money? The only thing between you and that is 12 years. And let's face it, most of you guys do not have the maturity or the forward thinking to think that long. Because you're saying, well, what if I need that money? Well, then that's because you invested money you couldn't afford to lose. Guys, $100 invested is all it takes. A little bit at a time. Maybe that's once a month, once a quarter, once a year. We have to start building a portfolio because you saw the value of your money is dropping, yet the value of the markets are increasing. So why do you have exposure in something that's dropping? You're all invested right now. It's called the dollar. And it's one of the worst things to be invested on the planet. In fact, I don't think they should consider it an asset. Because what asset has consistently since 1900 lost value to the tune of 
No other thing in the world is going to be considered an asset <laughs> except for the dollar. You have to think about this in terms of your money. You have to think about how do I get rid of this stuff? You need to get rid of your money, not be thinking about how keeping it and hoarding it. The only time you're hoarding money in life is getting ready for your next play, getting ready to buy that next property, getting ready to buy that next stock. That is the only time you're sitting on cash. Now, I'm going to be hosting an entire masterclass on this, so be on the lookout for an update on that in the future. An entire video will be discussing how I then build the portfolio. But I'm going to give you guys an exclusive dip into this right now live so you know exactly what I do. I want you to think about your portfolio and your money as a big piece of pie. Now, for intensive purposes, I want to pretend that you're going to invest $10,000. Again, this could be hundred bucks, a thousand bucks, a hundred thousand bucks, I don't care. But let's just pretend you've got $10,000 to invest. Here's how I drill this down. I take 60% and on the other half, I have 40%. Okay. My 60% is index funds. or ETFs. Those are things like SPY, QQQ. These are the S&P 500. These are things that are comprised of hundreds of companies that allows me exposure to the entire market. Now, what does that mean? I'm not going to make a whole lot of money to the upside, but I'm also not going to lose a bunch of money to the downside. The volatility is smaller. The majority of my money is in stuff like that. So it's not going up and down, but keep in mind the average return of the S&P 500 is over 8%. Now, especially with COVID, it's now actually higher than that. So you're getting an average return of that, whereas with the dollar, you're averaging negative percentages every single year that you hold it. Number two is the other 40%. Now this 40% is comprised of 20 hand-selected stocks. Now these are stocks that you guys are selecting yourselves. Now, why do I do 20? It allows me to risk 2% per stock, meaning if a company went bankrupt and it went to zero, I would lose 2% of the overall portfolio, AKA 200 bucks. See the risk there? It's low. So the point is, I want to keep majority of my money here to keep it stable so I'm not losing all my money. And then I want this exposed here to really allow me that upside potential if the market really expands. You know, over this last year, my 40%, some of these great winners that I've had have included Meta, they have included um, Carnival Cruise Line, Royal Caribbean, they've included some, some oil companies, they've included some banks. These are some of the things that was able over the last couple of years to help me with some bigger winners, but the majority is sitting right here. That's a little bonus for you guys. Click like for the bonus exclusively here right on my YouTube channel. Now, moving on, I want you to really recognize that we've talked about budgeting earlier in, in the previous video. Now we're talking about investing. You have to have investing in your budget plan. Your budget needs to include a line item to say, I need to save money for the sake of investing. Okay. Now that is different for all of you, but I want you to plan to invest a specific percentage every single check. It just comes out like clockwork and you start building that guys. When I started, my first investment was $300. We all start the first day in the gym. You might've been starting with elastic bands, not dumbbells. When you first got on the tennis court, maybe you didn't even play tennis yet. You were learning what the game was, how to score and you're practicing with a different ball. A lot of times you think oh, I can't start cause I won't be like Patrick. I don't have the money. I didn't either. Did Warren Buffett? No. Everybody starts at zero. Unless they were given some trust fund, I wasn't. They start at zero. Your goal right now, no matter if it's a hundred thousand, hundred thousand, hundred million, you got to start and you got to plan this. And without planning in your budget, you're not going to do it. You have to plan this. This has to be part of one of your goals. And so the key is you get invested. This is easy. A good majority here, maybe even higher, will do this. 
but less than 20% are going to stay invested. Do you understand? Most people invest, they won't keep their money in. They won't stay invested. The goal of investing should be to stay in to increase your net worth. And the only time you're pulling out is because you have a better reason to use the money. So I'll give you an example. Right now, I am doing my due diligence on a very small scale flip property. I'm not looking to invest more than six figures in it, 100,000. And so I'm right now debating as a just small investment in this syndication of putting in 50 to 100,000. Now, here's why I bring that up. 50 is kind of where I want to be, but I'm debating on the 100. In this YouTube channel, if you go back, I shared with the world I invested in crypto at 16,000. That 16,000, as of recording of this video right now, is worth about 45. And so for an, for an extra 5,000 of my cash balance, I could pull this out and now I've got 100 grand. Now granted, there's some challenges with this because I need to wait about two more weeks to get hit with long-term capital gains, not short-term capital gains. It'll save me about 2,000 bucks. I did the math recently. But the point is, I would only pull out this investment if I thought I had a better use for it. And listen, I don't have the answer to that yet because that's what I'm literally just sharing with you guys that I'm dealing with. But the point is, I'm trying to figure out the difference of this. I know the approximate return of this will be 30%. But I'm like, man, what if this 16 to 45 is just the beginning of the, of the play? And that's the challenge in investing. I'm sharing with you that sometimes you're not going to know. I still don't know. I'm doing my due diligence. I'm trying to figure out based off what I see in the markets. I'm asking questions. I'm researching with people. But I want you guys to understand that once you get invested, you must stay invested. I'm not getting out of one if I do to say, oh, look at me. I would immediately say, what can I do with this capital? Whether that's into something that will hold value. Heck, I would rather, instead of sitting on cash, go buy uh, a, another really exclusive watch than keeping it in cash. That's just me because I know that it's at least going to do decently to hold value. In many cases, it's actually going to appreciate slightly. I would rather do that than sit in cash. I would rather have the exposure in Bitcoin than sit in cash. Again, that's how I look at the markets. This is all perspective of me, just my opinion. Now, I want you to understand time spent in the markets beats time in the market. You can search this statement high and low and you will find the statistics about this. Here's fun fact. If you invested one year in the S&P 500 for one year, and you just stayed invested, and this was taken in 2019, so this number is higher than 8% now. But if you just, from 1990 to 2019, okay, if you just stayed invested, you'd make 7.7%. You never touched it. Just chill. Don't worry. Just no, don't touch it. But let's just say you were fighting with getting in and out and you missed just one day of the year. Congratulations. Your earnings were cut in half because you missed the best day of the year. Now that would be bad luck if you actually missed the best day of the year. Like what are the odds you pull out and miss that day then put back in? But that could happen. The point is, do you really want to risk half of your gain because you want to see that in cash for something? Look at this. Add one more day. You miss two days, you basically break even. You might as well not have invested. Look at this. You miss three days, congratulations. You are now losing money. You miss five days, you're losing a lot of money. You missed 20 days, forget about it. You lost 27% of your capital. You see, the market is a very fickle thing. The majority of the time, it's not doing anything. You ever notice that? How it's like quiet, 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 quiet. Then suddenly Twitter, Instagram, ding, ding, ding. Everybody's talking about the market skyrocketing. The people that were invested took advantage. They were able to take advantage of those moments. Same on the downside. But you have to be able to weather the storm and realize that we just talked about on a previous slide, 12 years gives you an over 98% chance of making money. If you just don't touch anything, you've got a 8% average annualized return. Look at this data. Don't overthink this. We must get invested. We must stay invested because time in the market beats trying to time the market. 
and get in and out at the perfect time. You're not going to be able to do it. So many have tried, so many have failed. Now, before we end this video, I have a mindset shift for you guys that hopefully will really touch home. And I have a question. At the moment that you invest in a stock, does your net worth go down? So let's say that I've got $1,000 in cash and I want to uh, buy $1,000 in Apple. Right now when I do this, I take 1,000 in cash and I go to 1,000 in Apple. Did my net worth go down? No, because I had 1,000 in cash, which is considered an asset. And then I have 1,000 in Apple, which is considered an asset. My assets didn't shift, my net worth didn't shift. So the answer to that question is no. But if I go to this next question, I say, the moment that you buy a Gucci belt, you go into the store with $400, and you buy that belt worth $400. The moment that you buy it and leave the store, assuming you're not going to return it, did your net worth go down? Yes. Because you can never get $400 for that belt again. That's why I always say, if you're going to buy nice things, for me, one of the things is watches. You want to buy things that are scarce, that are hard to get, that at worst case are not going to go down by more than 10%. Because in that case, when you're spending your money, at least it's holding in value. Many times I've seen people make those mistakes where they love the, oh, you guys know me in the Hublot watches. I talk all the crap about it. They love the Hublot watch look. They make them, a ton of them. There's no demand. So you go buy one for 10000 It's worth 5000 the moment you leave the store. Whereas if you go in and buy a Panda Daytona, go look it up, for $16,000, you leave the store, you go sell it for $28,000, $30,000, $35,000 right then because they're hard to get. Now, no, not anybody can buy those sort of things, but that's the difference and the mindset shift that even when you're spending, you got to be thinking about not really I'm losing this money, it's I'm parking this money in something that I can eventually get out if I wanted to. This you can't. Your net worth goes down. Another question. What about a Ford truck? Assuming non-COVID times, cars don't appreciate in value. What do they always say about the moment you drive off the lot? It goes down in value. So what do you think? Did your net worth go down? Absolutely. How about some Lululemon shorts? Everybody loves Lululemon. Did your net worth go down in value? The moment you leave, are, is somebody going to buy your musty shorts from you? No, they're going to go into Lulu and get it brand new. Your net worth went down. The point I'm trying to make is investing is not spending. This is a mindset shift, guys, because when you log in your bank account right now, it says you've got $1,484 or whatever the number is. If you spend that money, $100 on those Lulu shorts, you now have $1,384, and that is, let's say that's all you have. That's your net worth. If you invested that money, you still have a $1,384, but the other $100 is in a stock or something that did not lose value. You could go liquidate that and you could get that money back. Now, does this number fluctuate? Yes, and that's why people's net worths fluctuate. It's because they're exposed to the broader markets. And that's where a good building portfolio comes into play. So that's the mindset shift today I really wanted to shift on to you guys is that investing is not spending. They are not the same thing. Your mind may currently be associating investing cash as spending. You might feel, oh, I don't like to spend that money on that investment. I promise you guys, that first investment that pays off, that first time that you realize, wow, I just turned 16,000 to 45, like poof out of thin air, like I'm Houdini. You're going to go, oh shit, I want to do this every single time I can. Because most people are going to go take 16 and they're going to go buy a cute little side-by-side. -side. And guess what? Three years later, that side-by-side is worth eight. Yeah, they can get some out of it, but not all of it. And early on in our journeys, we must be thinking about asset appreciation, net worth creation, because that's what's going to start to build this generational wealth pattern. It's not going anywhere. It's in a different account. Think about it like that. Imagine if I'm buying a stock, it's no different than me moving from one savings account to the next, except for this one has more exposure now. It's just a new savings account. Your money is still there. It is still your money. 
Buying things that have a history of appreciating is your goal in life. Investing 101 is find things that will appreciate or have a history of appreciating and buy them. And what you want to do, your goal is have a good asset allocation. Meaning you're going to have this pie and this is not your stock pie. This is all sorts of stuff. You're going to have some cash. Maybe have some watches. Maybe you have some crypto. Maybe you have some real estate. Maybe you got some stocks. Maybe you got some bonds. Okay, got some other stuff. That is the point. You build a portfolio so that, well, Patrick, you talked about crypto. Why don't you cash out? That probably might crash. So that if it does crash, I had a whole pie here, guys. That wasn't the whole pie. That's not my game. Asset allocation in a smart way is my game. A little bit different. I don't risk everything in that regard. So that's stocks. Things that have a history of appreciating. You need to buy things that have a history of appreciating in value. That is stocks. That is commodities. That is real estate. That is treasuries. Now, the last thing I want to share with you guys today is I was flying home for Christmas a couple of years ago. Happened to sit next to a really successful entrepreneur locally from Montana that has done really well in multiple businesses. And we were sitting next to each other catching up. We've known each other for years. And something that I was talking about was just spending time in the markets. The stuff that I told you guys about today. And funny thing was, as he said, it sounds like you read Unshakable. And I said, no, what's that? He said, the stuff that you're saying is quite literally in Unshakable. You got to go read that book. And I'll tell you one thing, guys. I'm not a book reader. I don't like to read. There's only two books in my life that have really changed the way I think. Number one is Trading in the Zone by Mark Douglas. It's all about risk and perception of risk. Trading in the Zone by Mark Douglas, not shown here. But number two, it's this, Unshakable, Your Financial Freedom Playbook by Tony Robbins. This book teaches you the exact things that I just talked about, how you don't have to be the greatest in the markets. You don't have to try to beat the markets. You can simply invest in low-cost index funds and let the market ride. And you can see phenomenal results and you can outperform over 90% of hedge funds around the world. You got to go read this book. So after we get back on our next video, guys, we're going to talk about stability in your life. I hope this brought you some value. If it did, click the like button. I'm putting it all out there for you guys in and out. I hope this made sense and we'll see you on the next video.